How's it going everybody? I hope you're having a magnificent day. Today we're taking a look at how I was able to get over 29,000 Capital Peak points from hitting a variety of different bases. So let's jump right into the first attack. We're taking a look at the 10th raid and starting with a Builder's Workshop. Got a nice amount of value from this first hit. And as you can see, the majority of the defenses are on this left-hand side of the base. So here we're going to utilize a lot of the space. So they have this nice sort of line where you can have one group on the left, one group in the middle, and then one group on the far right. Now we do have no giants in the middle, so we're trying to focus the rams for these this group of wizards here to try and protect them because as long as the super wizards are protected you can mow through a crazy amount of the base as long as there's not too much splash damage so here we almost have the blast bow taken out sadly the blast bow gets off a couple more shots before it goes down and hits a lot of the super wizards very unfortunate However, we are taking oh, out almost over half the base. And we almost got 6,000 capital peak points from that one attack. So now we're jumping in to the 11th raid for the rest of the attacks. And we'll be looking at a wizard valley. So here we are looking at the very basic layout and as we can see if we take out this right hand side there are no other buildings between here and the giant cannons so that's why there are two packs of rocket balloons in the army so that as the troops destroy this section of the base and cross the bridge down here we can send in those balloons and take out Two of the giant cannons, which will give us a lot more points. So here we're just trying to make sure that if any of these super wizards get out in front, we're gonna try and drop a ram and distract the defenses. Right there, that one wizard almost got killed by that spear thrower. And then right now that cannon is did actually take out one of the super wizards. And then sadly it was a little bit too late with the ram so that one other spear thrower would get the super wizard. But not too worried about it. We have a nice pack of skeletons coming across the bridge and all the giants are going downward. So we do have this one spear thrower being a little bit annoying. Same with this cannon. But we also had dropped down the two rocket balloons on the air defense. And so it took out the giant cannon, and then it got the spear thrower, as well as the other giant cannon. So a massive amount of value from those few troop spaces. So yeah, now we just have the couple super wizards and a few giants, all pretty low health. Um, it's nice when there are some trash buildings, so the super wizards will sort of stop, take them out, let the giants get out in front of them. Don't quite have enough power to get through that inferno, but we did have some ground skeletons that got a couple more trash buildings. So we were able to get almost 5,000 from that attack. Next up, we have a barbarian camp cleanup. This one, we were trying to prep the base for air, because uh, it actually was worth quite a lot amount of points, but it was the very, very basic layout, and so the first attack got over half the base destroyed. So had we ended the first attack earlier, I mean, we could have technically put a couple more thousand points on this account, but I don't really like to end attacks early just to sort of fake getting a super high amount of points. It's, it's not realistic, it's not helpful, there's no strategy behind it. Just just makes your account look good for your, your clan. So, don't quite get as much points from this Barbarian Camp, but we get a bonus of 172. 
So next up, we're going to take a look at the Golem Quarry. This one, we actually do use both attacks here. Because there weren't too many different options available. You'll see here in a second. So we set up the base, put the uh, two packs of the Larry Barrel on the right hand side as, long, as well as a wizard. We have the one graveyard in between these two splash defenses to distract them. And then we have the two other graveyards up high to try and take out the blast bow and the multi-mortar. Doesn't quite work out this time. So this right hand side is going to die out. But we still have a good amount in the core of the base to pick up some more value. Nothing too crazy on this one. You know, all the troops now go downward. Speed it up a little bit. I get, a, I think, what, one more defense? Not even that, just a little bit more damage on the air defense, so. Now we'll take a look at the cleanup attack. I always like to use the flying fortress if I can. Zap down this quadrant of spear throwers and the wrapped rocket. You do the uh, minion trick as well as the two pack of rocket balloons. The idea was I thought we could try and pop that zap trap with the minions, but I forgot that the zap trap only goes off when it's, I think, five total housing space per that per unit so it won't actually go off for the individual minions and zap down a couple of them so now we're just trying to overwhelm the back end of the base we just have this last air defense and rapid rockets trying to get as many bonus points as possible And we were able to walk away with a bonus 173 bonus points. Now last, but certainly not least, is the Skeleton Park. This time we're going in with the graveyard version of the fortress. I like using the fortress because the fortress does very well versus the reflectors over here. Same with the rocket balloons. And has a lot of health so it can tank the air bombs and the minion hut if it ever gets close to it. It's always good to bring one spare troop to take out that building and this building over there if possible because that'll open up the deployment so you can get closer to the air bombs. If you forget about it then you are stuck deploying from the original spot in the base. It's kind of unfortunate. So here we are, being very patient, waiting for the Flying Fortress to get closer and closer. We have a bunch of Air Skeletons that actually take out the Minion Hut, which is perfect. So our Flying Fortress has a very nice amount of HP left. The reason why we're waiting on the balloons is because I know for a fact there is a Tesla next to this hut over here. So we're waiting to get over 50% of the base destroyed, so that Tesla pops. And then if we destroy that Tesla very quickly, with the help of these air skeletons to distract the first hit, then we can take out this air defense very quickly, and then there is no thing to protect from balloons besides that rapid rockets, which we'll take care of at a later time. So we send in the other pack, the last pack of rocket balloons, Take out the air defense and then take out the wizard tower. We even got lucky and had a few air skeletons left. They take out that trash building as well as this trash building. Eventually this one as well. The second minion hut does lock on to the flying fortress. There's not really anything we can do about it. Um, technically you could bring in a ram, open up this wall, and then you could directly target it with some balloons but pretty much any kind of air attack will die out to this air bombs on the back end, so. I'd rather just keep it simple, 
try and get the uh, the pretty easy 5,000 points and then see how much extra we can get. And that is all we are able to achieve. Got 5,570. So that's how I was able to get 29,000 from a variety of different bases. I hope this video was helpful for you. And as always, if you want to support me, you can like and subscribe. And there will be a couple more videos on the screen if you want to keep watching some of my content. Until next time, take care.